Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to explain my affiliate marketing dashboard using Notion for you. I love using Notion and if you're not yet already familiar with it, I really encourage you to check it out as a really great resource and tool for business and life. If we've not yet met before, my name is Crystal Stiliano and my mission is to help online business owners create a sustainable, scalable and profitable business. And I provide tools for planning and tracking your progress so that you can focus on what matters most. I am passionate about systems and processes because I believe they create the structure that allow you to grow and scale your business. And it's what I'm using in my affiliate marketing business, which I also love to share with other people. This Notion template can be used for any business that you have, but as I said, I am uh, amazing. I love my affiliate marketing business, and so I've created that for this purpose. What I'm going to do today is just take you through what this dashboard includes. I'm not going to go into too many of the specifics around the nuances of using Notion and how you can customize it yourself. I will show you a couple of little tricks as we go, but for the most part, if you are still new to them, I encourage you to go and check out their website, notion.so forward slash help, and it will go through all of the different ways that you can use Notion for the uses that you desire, both in business and for your life. And it's just going to explain just some of the basic fundamentals that I encourage you to learn before you start using and customizing the database so you can get the most out of it. So basically this dashboard, the front page is an overview of everything that's included. And I have set this up the way that I want to use it. But once you have downloaded this template, you can move things around, you can change the links, you can customize it to suit your needs. What we have is a cover. We have some sections to break up the page a little bit, and then we have links and dashboards and databases to suit our needs. What I will quickly show you is these covers can be changed and all you need to do is click change cover. I have actually set this one up in Canva. You can create your own images and download them onto your computer and click the upload button or you, there's a whole bunch of website images through Unsplash and then also just some plain graphics that you can use. But yeah, if you want to create your own, you can just download them onto your computer and click upload file. It's as simple as that. The same with any of these buttons. You can basically put images anywhere in the page that you choose. Just click a space and do your forward slash, oh, there we go, and click just type image and it will pop up. Why is my computer going slow? Let's try again. Image, there we go. And you can just upload that there. The forward dash is basically, if you want to put anything onto the page, you just click that and you can insert any of the blocks. So basically Notion is set up as blocks. Once you have a block there, you can see on the left hand side, you have the little six dots. Basically you can then move this around anywhere on the page you choose. All right, let's get into it. So what I've done is I've set up quick links. So anyone that's in business knows you have those reoccurring questions, information and resources that you need to access regularly. And what I've done is I have created a list here and these lead to other pages. So I have my price list, and excuse my computer, it is working very slow today. And what I've done is I have chosen to just insert an image that I already had of the price list. You can create it by typing things into the page or creating a table that you can put prices in as well. We then have We then have product information and collateral. So I've created this page. So everything that I need, whether it's for a customer inquiry or for myself, if I want to use, as you can see, I've got graphics, a product book, information about the product, the compensation plan. I haven't yet added in all the research links, but you can do that there. I've set this up as a table and I've just kept it really simple, just what it is and the link. You can then add extra information into other columns as well if you choose. 
Okay, so now we have our conversation template. So this is taking the messenger framework and I have just inserted it into a couple of different database type set setups. That allows me to be able to search and customize how I've grouped the information the way that it works for me. There's some information up here through the toggles and then I have set it up as a board. If you want to change the layout of how your database looks, you just click the three dots next to the blue button and you click layout. Here you can see the different ways that you can look at the information. I've also got it so you can actually see the page content in the card preview, but you can tick that off if you don't want it and you can you mean, change how you group it. So I have got it set up as response type you can change it to what the other options are in the database that I've created. So I've created a view which has the messenger framework and then I've also created a view which has common objections that people have. And what I've done is I've grouped them into different categories and what I can do is then just add in any new ones that come up. So if I've got any common questions or if I have some good responses of how, what's worked for me before, I can just add them in. So it's literally a cut and paste anytime I need to send something to a, a client or lead. Rather than each time you want to add something in, clicking new and starting a completely new entry, I've created a template. So if you come over to the blue new box and click the drop arrow, I have created conversation response. What this does is it's got all of the categories I need that will group it in the way that I choose. And once again, you can add any properties you want into this to suit the needs that you have. So I have, so, so, chosen to select if there's an objection put that in or if it's a response type put that in as well so I can choose either or and then it will show up in the different views that I have set up here that's a conversation template hope you're starting to get an idea now of all of the different ways that you can use Notion but also how you can use my template that I've created and customize it to suit your own needs as well what I have also done is links and groups. So often there's a lot of different things within a business that you need to be able to send, copy and paste, drop into comments and for meetings or webinars, all those sorts of things. So I have put that in here. So I've got where all the paperwork is for sales. I have all of the links for a particular group, funnel links, paperwork links, portals, all of that is in this one place, so I know that all of the links that I need are located there. I don't need to go trawling through emails or Facebook groups to find the links. The other thing I've done is put a welcome booklet in there, which is amazing when you're onboarding someone. What I've done is I've just put that as text and I've just highlighted it and I've clicked link. And then what I've done is I've copied and pasted the URL. So basically I've just hyperlinked that. So when I click that, it'll open up that booklet for me just so it's all in that one place. What I'm gonna do now is we're gonna move on to our lead tracker I have set up as a database as well. So I've put the link there to open it up into a separate page, but I've also added the view of the follow-up calendar. So that way when I look at my database, I can see all of the leads that I need to follow up, all the people that I need to follow up, any key information that I need. I could also put in my recurring meetings that I have in here as well. So I'll show you how I created that, but let's just go into the lead tracker. Once again, I've set it up as a database and I have set up a couple of different views. Like I've said before, you click the three buttons here and you can choose the layer and then you can also choose what information you want. So I've grouped this by sales process stage. Before I show you how I've done that, I want to just explain like I did in the conversation tracker, rather than creating a brand new empty let me show you. It's completely empty. What I've done is I've created a template. So you can either click new here or click lead entry template. And let's create a, a, a new entry. So say you've got a new lead. Um, let's just put example. 
I've set up these properties which you can change. So I have set up my nurture type as someone who is a yes, a no, a maybe or a not right now. That works for me but you can change your terminology if you like. All you need to do is click nurture type and edit property and then you can just change these options here or add options as well. Okay, so let's just say the nurture type is a yes. They live in Australia. They live in Sydney. This is the date that they have connected with you. So from the start, you can track the customer journey. So let's just say they connected with us today. They're really, really keen. Come on. You can put their mobile number, their email address, their social media account. That's really great just so you've across where their social media is if you never if you never need to follow them up quickly. And also just a really great way to keep track of what's working and what's not working in your business is tracking how customers and leads find you. So how did they opt in to show interest in you? So let's just say they found us on TikTok, Instagram, and they responded to a story poll. So that way you can actually track where people are coming from and that way you're not wasting your time on content that's not converting, but you can do more of what is working. The sales process, so we have sent the link to this lead and they've got the webinar link. We now know that they have the webinar link and what we've agreed to do is follow them up on Monday. I can set a reminder and also a time reminder if I need that prompting, otherwise it'll just sit in my calendar for that date. Also their reason why, why are they wanting to join? Why are they interested? This is a really good way to know what it, what people that are coming through that are attracted to you are mostly interested in. Then you can produce content really related to just pick up some trends and connect different people. So if you've got new leads coming in who perhaps have an objection to someone that started in the business for similar reasons, you can introduce them to each other and that will help the customer journey. And then also putting in what was the webinar that they, what, that way you can also see what, what's working and where people came through. And then this bottom section is just all empty text. So I would use this as a way of tracking conversations. So just doing some brief notes and dates of the engagement that you've had with a, a lead, because as we know, leads don't always convert straight away. It could be a six month, 12 month process. So at least you've got a general guide of what the conversation is, why they're interested in joining, any of the, the life stuff that they're going through. It allows you that when you then reconnect with them, if you haven't talked to them in a couple of months, that you can kind of pick up on where the conversation ended. Also being able to understand like what the common objections are. So if someone's like a not right now, because say for example, it's finance, in six to 12 months time, you can follow up and just bring back up that objection or what the reason was that they aren't able to join the business right away. And then so all of those entries are now going to sit in which of the sales process stage that that person is in. I've also set it up so you can look at it as follow up which is the same calendar from the dashboard and then also the nurture type so you can have a really quick overview of all of the leads who's really keen right now, who's a maybe, who's a not right now, and then that way you can really track if it's someone as a maybe and you know there's a really great webinar coming up, you can then email all of those people. I've also set it up as a table, which looks a little bit messy because I haven't properly entered the, the in, info in, but with the emails you can literally just copy and paste this email list, pop it into a group email and send it off on them. Or you obviously can track location and you can also sort these these far, these rows to, to make it easier to find relevant information. You can also export this into a spreadsheet. So that's how you track leads. And it's great to just have everything in the one place. We then have our numbers. So I'm working on for a run and that is just a really good way to see where I'm at, what I need to do. And the KPI tracker, I have the link here and I also have it showing down here. So this is actually a Google Doc spreadsheet. And what I've done is I've just embedded that in. So I've just done the forward dash and I've just clicked embed and you can embed obviously PDFs or info, but I've in embedded a Google Doc and basically I've just copied the link from 
my drive and put it in here and then that's showing up. So as I update that Google Doc spreadsheet, these numbers are actually going to change and you'll be able to see in real time what that looks like. I haven't yet, I am in the process of setting up a dashboard database for my KPI tracker, but at the moment I'm just using the Google Drive. Let me just show you what is in that. And so all of these links that I have sent and embedded into this template, when you click on them, you are able to then you can't change them, but you will be able to create your own copy and then customize it to suit yourself. And then what you can do is just update those links that connect to your dashboard. This is, I've set this up for a 90 days plan, and this is just tracking the overall data. And then I've got one for each month. So I've got targets for each week of what I am aiming to do. And then each week it'll automatically calculate the totals. And then I'll also have a monthly overview as well. So that is a very quick snapshot of the affiliate marketing database dashboard. Sorry, I hope that was really helpful and gives you some ideas of how you can organize and keep all of your business information all in the one place to save you time, save you stress, save you wasting time trying to find things. And it's just going to streamline everything for you. So please reach out via my social media at crystal.stiliano or email me if you have any questions. And I really hope that this is a really helpful resource for you to not only grow your business, but scale it in a really systematic way.